I hope that you're all safe and well. Welcome to our first ever virtual GCSE options evening. My name is Mr Nightingale and I'm one of the assistant head teachers here at the college with responsibility for the curriculum. I'll present to you for approximately 20 minutes to launch the op options process to you for this year before handing over to our careers lead Mr Wallace. But just a brief bit of housekeeping before we start. As the talks unfold, please put any questions that you have in writing using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We will not be able to answer verbal questions during our presentations, but after the event, we will put together a document that answers all FAQs, which we will send out to all parents and will put on the college website. Any subject specific questions or highly specific questions relating to your child should be put to your child's teachers or the relevant head of department. Contact details will be given at the end of my presentation for this purpose. Year eight parents evening is also coming up later this month at which any remaining questions relating to options can be discussed with your child's teachers. Now, there are three things that I'd like to emphasize before my presentation begins. One, there is no rush to make any decisions. The deadline for making final decisions is the 12th of March. So please take your time to think about things carefully and read all the information that you have and will be sent. Two, please do not feel the need to make lo lots of notes as I'm talking this evening. This presentation is being recorded and will be put on the college's YouTube channel. I will also send a copy of my accompanying PowerPoint home for parents along with Mr. Wallace's and will upload to, to Microsoft Teams for students to see. And three, Please discuss all choices with each other as a family, with form tutors and with teachers. Although the options process is taking place remotely this year, you are not alone and we are here to support you every step of the way. Okay, I'll screen share now as I talk you through the process. This is undoubtedly a big moment in the Wyndham College journey of our year eight students. Up until now, they have had their entire curriculum and timetable decided for them by us, their teachers. That changes in year nine as they start to have some say over what they study. Saying this, lots will remain constant and familiar in what they will study throughout years nine, 10 and 11. We call this our core curriculum and it includes all the subjects listed on the screen. So up until the end of year 11, all students will continue to study English language and literature, mathematics and science. At the end of year nine, a decision is made as to whether each student will study combined science in years 10 and 11, leading to two GCSEs, or triple award science, which leads to three GCSEs. This decision is based on students' aptitude and ability in science, as well as personal preference. But this decision is not made until the end of year nine, so all students will continue with a common science curriculum next year. All students will continue to study religious education, physical education and games and PSHE until the end of year 11. There are a few subjects that continue on in year nine only. The first is core technology. This will feature on all students timetables, even if they have chosen GCSE design and technology or GCSE food. Core Humanities, which I will explain in more detail in a moment. Core ICT, even if students have opted for GCSE Computer Science or Creative Eye Media. And Floriat Lessons, which students have had a taste of in year eight this year. So just to explain how our Humanities curriculum through to year 11 works in a little bit more detail. In year seven and eight, all students study Geography and History on an equal basis. In year nine, they will follow one of three possible pathways. First, if they have opted for GCSE history, they will also study core geography in year nine only. Secondly, if they have opted for GCSE geography, they will also study core history. And thirdly, if they have opted for GCSE history and GCSE geography, they will also study core religious studies. These core elements are designed to keep our year nine curriculum as broad as possible before students specialize in the GCSE, GCSE humanity subjects that they have chosen in years 10 and 11. Students will continue to have fortnightly Floriat lessons in year nine. More details of exactly what they entail can be found on the college website, 
but the principle is to enrich the student experience of our curriculum through taught elements on identity, leadership and character development. I will endeavour to expose students to cultural and academic experiences that do not normally form part of an existing curriculum area. Guest speakers and local expertise will be drawn upon as part of this programme. Now, to explain the choices that students will have to make. The first isn't actually too much of a choice at all, and that is which language they will continue to GCSE. Students must choose either French or Spanish, and they should continue the language that they have been studying in year seven and year eight. If a student is a keen linguist, they can opt to study both languages. The second choice is whether they will continue with geography, history, or both. All students must do at least one, but if they enjoy both subjects and have ability in both subjects, there is absolutely no reason why they cannot continue with both humanities. Students must then make two further choices and a reserve choice from the list of subjects on the screen. The subjects in bold are the ones that are new for year nine. So if your child is interested in any of these subjects and what they entail at GCSE, they should read the entry in the options booklet really carefully and they or you should contact the head of department for additional information if required. There are a couple of final points on choices. Students can only choose one from fine art, textiles and photography. All three of these subjects actually sit under the GCSE art and design umbrella, so they are effectively different branches of the same GCSE. In addition, they are often timetabled against each other, so for these reasons we ask that our artistic students only choose one of these subjects to pursue. Also, some of our students with SEND may be removed from a subject on the advice of the SEND department to have additional learning support as part of our Curriculum Plus programme. All decisions about withdrawals from subjects are made on a case-by-case -case basis. If you have any queries about this, please do contact our SENCO, Mrs Browning. Her contact details will be on the final slide in a moment. Now, this is a slide that I showed the students in my launch assembly with them last Friday. It lists some good and bad reasons for picking a subject at GCSE. The top one in the good column is all important. Students will be studying these subjects for the next three years and will sit exams at the end of that time. So if they are motivated and enthused to learn in those subjects, it will make the process much easier. Having ability or potential in a subject is also important, although this is of course relative to each student as an individual. Now some students, no matter how many times I tell them, still fall into picking some of their subjects for some of these bad reasons. With the first point, please be your own person. Yes, it is nice to be in classes with your best friends, but remember that you will have to work hard in every subject. So if you choose the subject, choose a subject based on friendship groups, you may find yourself studying something that you do not enjoy. Similarly, older siblings can be useful to speak to for some advice, especially if they have recently been through the college, but just because they had a good or bad experience of a subject does not mean that you will too. So be your own person. Please don't use subjects because you think they will be easy. Every GCSE poses its own challenges. And finally, don't choose a subject based on your current teacher. There is no guarantee that you will have them for that subject in years nine, 10 and 11. So please base decisions on the subject and not the teacher. I'll talk you through the options timeline and next steps now. So last Friday, I did a launch assembly for the year eight students, which was on Teams that was recorded. So if they miss that, if they go onto the all year eight students team, they'll be able to watch that back. It's only about 10 minutes long. Obviously this evening is our options evening via Zoom. Hopefully you've also all received a PDF copy of the options booklet by email. Um, if you haven't, please do get in contact with the college office or myself and we'd be happy to send that out again. Um, I've also uploaded an electronic version to the All Year 8 group on Microsoft Teams for students to look at at their leisure. 
tomorrow, um, as well as emailing you the presentations from tonight, um, I will also email you the Google form. Um, it will come in the form of a link. Um, and this is the form that students will need to complete. So no messing around with pieces of paper this year. If I click on the link, it'll just briefly take you through. It's a very, very straightforward form, very self-explanatory in which the student will have to fill out some of their details. They'll then make their language selection, their history or geography selection, and then their two other choices and a reserve before putting in parents' details, just to confirm that it's something that you've discussed with them and the date that, the, that you are submitting the form. So hopefully very straightforward. But any problems with that, again, just get in touch. And really, for the rest of February, early March, your, your child hopefully will be having structured conversations with you as parents, tutors and subject teachers about making the right choices. I'm sure that many teachers in their lessons this week have already started talking about what their subject entails at GCSE. But if they haven't, they will be spending some lesson time in upcoming lessons doing that with the year eight students. Heads of department of new subjects like business and sociology can be contacted for more information if needed and contact details will be on the next slide in a moment. After half term on the 25th of February will be year eight parents evening, which will be online this year. So again, there's a further opportunity there to talk through with your child's subject teachers if there are any questions that are options related. And the ultimate deadline for completing the form is the 12th of March. I will um, send a reminder in the days before then if, if anyone looks like they, they haven't done it, just to give you a little nudge to make sure you get that done. And then after that, for the rest of March and April is when I start building the timetable for next year and building the option blocks. And that's where if a, if a student hasn't got either of their first two choices, I will be in touch to confirm they will be studying their reserve choice. Only around 2% of students may get their reserve choice. So the vast majority of students will get the two first choices that they pick. Um, but that reserve choice is therefore important because there is a small chance that you will end up studying that next year. So your reserve choice does need to be thought about carefully and you need to make sure that you pick a subject that you would still be prepared to study. And last bit of advice really is take your time with this process. It is not first come first serve. So there's no advantage held by anyone who completes the form tomorrow, as opposed to someone who completes the form on the 11th of March. Um, in fact, I would rather students take their time and think about it carefully before completing the form, because inevitably there's always a few students who rush to do it and then a couple of weeks later contact me to say that they've changed their mind and want to do something else. So do take your time. It's not first come first served. So lastly, just the contact details of our heads of department, should you have any subject specific questions or require um, further information. Don't worry about noting those down because, as I say, you will be sent this presentation. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's about me, about all from me to start with. So um, I will stop screen sharing in a moment and I'll um, hand over to Mr. Wallace, our careers lead for part two of this evening. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Miss Nightingale. Um, and good evening to everybody uh, watching. My name is David Wallace and I am the careers lead uh, at the college. Um, I joined in September, so I've had a very unusual start uh, as many, many students to this year. Um, but here to reassure you that the support and help that you need um, for students to make the right choices is coming your way. Um, in this short presentation, I will explain some of the thinking behind how you might help your son or daughter make decisions over these choices that you have coming that Mr Nightingale has explained and hopefully dispel some of the issues that you think may be coming your way to make things easier. Um, as mentioned, this uh, information will be sent to you as well. Um, so no need to take any notes, this will come to you. I'll just share my screen one second. So um, what we're doing this evening is making some decisions around the GCSEs, the level two qualifications that your son or daughter will study. As was mentioned, there is a, a core set of subjects and these are studied uh, across the whole of England, um, that it's not something that just the college does. And that includes the subjects you see on the left, uh, plus the core P and PSHE, and also the RE. To that, very sensibly, the college adds for the vast majority of students, uh, a humanity and a modern foreign language. Um, and I'll come back to the moment as to why that is such a great idea um, in terms of the options available to the student later on. So how do you go about making your choice 
of these two options that you add to that list? Well, I think we need to, to imagine what it is we're trying to achieve here. And I think these two options give the opportunity for a student to have a broad and interesting week at school with the subjects that they'll enjoy, but also succeed at. So it's a small choice alongside the core and those two humanities and MFL to enable the student to improve their skills in different areas with something they find interesting. So here's some thoughts really backing up from those that Mr Nightingale mentioned. It is very important that if uh, a student is already showing an interest in a subject and perhaps doing well in it, that that is something clearly that should be part of the consideration. Um, so that is really an important area. Second thing, as mentioned, there are some new subjects amongst those choices. And perhaps one of the ways to work out whether that one of those is the right thing going forward is to look at how they're delivered. Is it an essay based subject? Is there lots of reading, lots of research? Can you express an opinion in it? Uh, are there practical elements or teamwork elements? And, and what is the exam style? How is the student going to be assessed as to their ability in this subject? And the options booklet gives you the information there. And if you're lacking any from it, then do by all means contact the heads of department to find out anything more that you need to know. And by this, a student can make the decision that perhaps something they've studied for the last year and a half is similar and something they enjoy, but gives them a new and interesting idea of going forward. Um, and whilst thinking about that, I would stress that perhaps variety is a good idea. The core subjects are quite uh, classroom based outside of the core PE, and perhaps it's a great idea to add something different to the week. Uh, imagine your son and daughter walking out of a classroom based English or maths lesson. What actually would spark them up? Would it be something different? Is it a creative subject, music, drama, uh, one of the arts? Something like that that gives them something different to look forward in the subjects that they study every day. As mentioned, some of the things that if you hear even a hint of, I would really love you to squash. This idea that, oh, my friends are doing it, so I'd like to. Um, something I would add to Mr Nightingale's comments there uh, are, of course, um, by the end of year 10, when that friend is getting a grade nine and you're getting a grade four, you might not be quite so friendly anymore. So it really doesn't work that if one student enjoys it. And of course, I like the teacher. Well, they're all great teachers, um, but you have no uh, idea of who may teach it um, or whether even perhaps they would still be at the college. People move on. So if you hear those things, please make sure. Now, the last section of this is something that, that causes some problems. Um, and that is, how do you deal with career ambitions with such a young student? And hopefully by talking you through this, we can actually dispel any of the problems that you might face around this. Um, the basis of this is that actually there is a very good reason that those subjects sit in the core. It is because they are the most commonly required um, qualifications required to go forward into A-levels or in a further education course, and then take you off to university or into the world of apprenticeships and work. So actually, as an example there, you know, the sciences and maths are the ones required for things like studying me medicine or vet science. And actually what these two options are to do is just to keep a broad choice available to the student. Now in the considerations for later study, that really is only concerned with the university situation. Most employers beyond things like English and maths good scores are actually not that particular over the subject study. They are much more interested in the levels that the student has acquired. But there are some thoughts going forward uh, that may be take some thought into university. For example, when moving up to A-levels, there are certain A-levels that are required for a student to go into university courses. And the vast majority of these are in the core anyway. So for example, any student who may in late, later as they go through school decide to go into medicine or vet science, as I mentioned, will need chemistry and biology, which is part of the triple science anyway. If they are uh, leaning towards engineering, architecture, um, or the computer sciences, then maths and physics are A-level requirements for most of those areas, uh, particularly in top universities. So they will be part of the core. So those options will be available to them uh, when they stuff it, set up into sixth form. The odd one out of this are the art and design, uh, which is an option and is required to step into sixth form. But as was mentioned, you only need one. 
any one of the art or design courses will open up the options to go on. So you could have an art GCSE and choose to do um, photography, for example, at, at A-level. And when moving up into a university course to study um, an art or design course, they will be expecting to have a level three, an A-level portfolio. After that, yes, of course, an A-level subject is useful to have. And for that, it is useful to have a GCSE in it. But actually, there are plenty of universities where you can go and study history without even a history A-level, the vast majority, in fact. So actually, outside of the art and design, the subjects required to step forward into university and then into a career are actually part of the core anyway. One of the advantages of the college uh, offering the majority of students um, the humanity and the um, modern foreign language is also around the fact that these then create the list of what are called the facilitating subjects. Now, there is some uh, misunderstanding of what facilitating subjects are. Um, it is a phrase that was brought up by the Russell Group of Universities um, to actually uh, put together a list of A-level subjects that give, uh, give students more choice when it comes to their, a to their degree subject. It does not get you into a better university simply by studying these. It's, it's your top grades that will do that. But these are the facilitating subjects that are the most commonly required by a university. And as you can see, by offering the language and the history or geography, the student has all of these available to them when they actually reach the A-level area and go forward. Um, and what this together brings is the English baccalaureate, which is a phrase you will see mentioned in the uh, option booklet. Um, it isn't a standalone qualification. Uh, it is a basket of qualifications. And actually, uh, no employer or university is going to ask whether the student has the EBAC, as it's shortened to. But actually, what it does do ensure is that the student has at GCSF, GCSE the facilitating subjects to allow them to take it to the next level. And when thinking about that, I'm really looking forward to working with your sons and daughters and talking to you as they go through the next three years and then if they stay into sixth form. Their working life is going to be very, very different from the experience of us. Um, we can see that from the last 12 months and how quickly things have changed. For example, doing what we're doing at this very moment. And so actually it is going to be a very different working situation. Um, and what I will be talking to them about is this idea of career development, that actually they are going to have to engineer opportunities going forward, that they are going to have to adopt a, an attitude of lifelong learning. It doesn't stop when you leave college. It doesn't stop when you leave university. There's more to be done to imbue an entrepreneurial um, sort of ideals into them. So that actually one day they may be running their own businesses. But most importantly, that they're actually happy with what they do as they go forward, starting with their options into year nine and working into their working lives. That actually what we all should be aiming for is that they have happy and successful lives. So to sum up, this is what you should have in mind when you're considering what it is that the, the students choose as these options, a broad and interesting week with subjects they enjoy. And that's really important. Now, if you do need help and support with all of this, there's uh, my contact details are on the screen, but also my colleague, Ellen Alexander. She is an independent careers advisor um, that we bring into the college regularly to help with, uh, with students. Um, and she, we've given her a Wyndham College uh, email address so that you can contact us well. She's entirely independent, so she can offer information as well. Um, but we'll send this information out to you. So if you do have a, a son or a daughter who has a career ambition and you just want to check, by all means, do send me an email or Helen and we can advise you. Um, but actually, as I've explained this evening, that really isn't where we need to start. That is something we will work with your son and daughter on over the coming years to make sure that they are making an informed decision post 16 and then if they stay with us post 18 as to where they go. And I look forward to, uh, to hearing from you if you have any questions at all, but I will uh, hand you over to uh, Mr Nightingale to finish off. Okay, thank you very much, um, Mr Wallace. So that leaves it to me to wrap up this evening. Um, thank you so much for joining us and do get in touch if there's anything that we can do to support. But please remember my three takeaways that I mentioned right at the start. So first, please take your time. 
Second, more information, including my presentation, uh, Mr. Wallace's presentation and the links to the Google form will be forthcoming. And third, please discuss all choices and really think carefully before reaching any final decisions. Okay, um, wishing you all the very best. Stay safe and goodbye from us.